today, if we open the news, we get really scared, basically in panic with coronavirus. There is such an avalanche of misinformation regarding the coronavirus and its impact on the economy, on jobs, and on our own life. So I decided to work during this weekend, trying to help you and to help the society in one specific point based on my own experience, how you can evaluate the true real impact of a potential pandemic of coronavirus in your project work, in your product development work, regardless of the methodology you are using. But I created a basic 20 questions or 20 statements that will help you to guide if you are in a good position, a danger position, or if you are in a really serious position and you take actions. So I want to show you more now how you can handle this crisis situation in the best possible way. What I want to show here is that I produced these two pages that you can download on the link below. These two pages are Creative Commons, so you can make the best use for you. So they are not for sale. They are just finding a way of helping you with your work. So basically, what I did, based on my experience at the UN, my experience, my work experience, for example, my first paper I wrote about crisis and trouble project goes back to 1998. So I tried to consolidate this and create a set of 20 statements that you may disagree, become neutral, agree, or strongly agree with them. So based on this judgment, I will give you a rating and a number that will guide you towards a three-range process, green, yellow, or red. These 20 statements, they are divided into three dimensions. The first one is related to the country and the region you are in. The second one is related to the organizational you are in. And the third one is related to your project, specifically to your project. And why I have created this tree? Because sometimes your project is not with a high exposure, but you are in an organization that due to other projects became extremely exposed. Or you are in a country that are very exposed. So this is how we did that. So I made a combination of these three criteria to get a rating for you. Before we go to that, Please watch this video up to the end because I will go through all questions explaining you what do I mean by each question because sometimes when you read you don't get that. This is why I'm asking everybody to watch the video before they do the assessment so you can answer it in a proper way. Second thing, do it in groups. Don't do it by yourself because sometimes you just watch it too much TV today or you went to your Facebook like one day. I live in Portugal for those who do not know that. One day, one of my aunts uh, called me and said, Ricardo, uh, there will be an earthquake in Lisbon. You must leave Lisbon now. And I said, aunt, where did you see that? And she said to me, oh, I saw it on Facebook. And I said, oh, come on. Facebook is a great for social media, but it's not the right source for you to get the information to make proper decisions. So you need to understand that. So here, it's my set of suggestions. Please, this is not prescriptive. It, it does not mean, oh, I'm 76, so I'm in there. No, this is just to guide you. So let's go and try to understand the questions I'm asking you. The first one is related to the country and your regional exposure. There is a visible lack of ability of local, regional, and national authorities to deal with crises of this nature. So, for example, if you truly believe that there is a lack of ability, a lack of competence, and you have no doubt that they don't have the competence to handle this magnitude of crisis, you will put strongly agree. But if you think that 
your country is absolutely perfect and that you have a full trust on the authorities and the government agencies to handle a potential pandemic, you put disagree. There is no strong disagree. If you disagree, it means you disagree. You, you think that that statement is not true in your case. So then go into your organization. So we went from country, now talking about your organization. Then the second question that, and the first one about the organization is that the organization operates in areas related to tourism, hospitality, events, aviation, or health. So what do I mean by these sectors? Because these are dramatically affected sectors. Some sectors will be much more affected than others. So if your project is an IT project, but if you work in an aviation environment, this increases the risk that you need to raise a red flag. Because this, these works like tourism, for example, today is very hard for you to say, okay, let's buy a cruise ticket. Right? Do, do you agree with me that it, it would be very unusual that someone invest on that? But imagine that you work in a cruise ship, in a cruise company. So this is a big issue for you. If you think about health, and, and maybe people will say, oh God, health can be an extremely good position to be in. No, it's not. It depends. Maybe it can be a little bit better position if you work directly with coronavirus. However, do you agree with me that if a pandemic comes into place, you, if you are not sick, you will avoid at all costs being at a hospital. It's not the time today to go to do a plastic surgery, right? You will not go to a hospital that would have maybe 80% of the people uh, trying to save their lives from coronavirus. So this is why the health sector will be dramatically impacted. So you need to say, does your organization operate? So if you disagree that your organization operates, so if you have no relationship with that, you just put disagree. But if your business is a little bit related to one of these areas, you put okay, neutral, or maybe agree. And if your business is one of them, then it's a strongly agree, definitely. The third question, your organization as a relevant client, an organization that operates in areas related to tourism, hospitality, events, or aviation. So maybe you are not, but you have a client. So let me give you an example. You are a fishing company in Asia. You have a small team, a small impact, everything. However, your big clients are the hotels in, for example, China. So despite that your business is not in that area, your main client. So what will happen if the hotels do not have clients? They will not buy from you. So if you have a relevant client and you put a strong agree, you are more towards of having a problem. Number four, there is no defined corporate approach or response team for COVID-19. So this is very basic. If you do not have, you put agree, strongly agree. If you have, you put disagree. What is important here? It's a statement. You need to read the statement. And this is why I put the no in bold so you don't contradict yourself. So you need to read. If I said there is no definite corporate approach and you say, no, there are corporate policies in place for that, then you just mark here, disagree. Then it's about finance. The organization is facing challenges regarding financial liquidity. Means, is your company in financial trouble? Because let me tell you, uh, and I'm, I need to be honest, and this is my duty of care with all of you. If your company is in trouble and is operating in this environment, the trouble became much bigger now. If you have some kind of protection, financial protection, this is the time 
to be a little bit more comfortable. But if you are in that, or if you are having struggling to have clients or improve, this will be the time that you may face a much more dramatic challenge. The next one, organizational leadership is pessimist on the impact of COVID-19. So how is the mood inside your organization? It's pessimistic, based on the collective knowledge. And I'm not talking about blind optimist or blind pessimist. I'm talking about actual, real perceived pessimist. Number seven, the organization is based or has a strong presence in category one or two, based on the UK government assessment. Let me tell you, if you don't want to use the UK government assessment, use any one you want. But you need to use a classification of country that is reliable and that your organization trusts. So I use the UK because it's one of the easiest one to read. So there is a link on the form that you can see that. So today, as I'm recording uh, this video, category one are specific areas uh, uh, in China, are northern uh, Italy and others. This may change tomorrow, but what I want is, is your organization in one of these places? So this is what I want to know. If your organization is based, you will put strongly agree. If your organization has some relevant operations, you put agree. If you have a little bit of operation, you put neutral. But you have, if you don't operate on that, if you are, for example, a Brazilian company operating in the countryside of one state, you have no relationship outside the country. So in this case, you put just disagree. The next one, the COVID-19 will produce an unrecoverable loss in revenues or results for the organization. So let me give you two examples of that. One thing, you are a construction company and you have to stop the project because of coronavirus, send people home and this. What is your damage? Your damage is in your cash flow. Your damage is because you will have to pay people and not produce the goods that your project aims to produce. But when you come back, you still have the land, you still have what you already built. So you don't lose, you just delay that. Example two, you are a hotel and you have a bedroom and you have 365 days of that bedroom to sell. If your hotel is shut down for three months, what happened? Think with me, what happened? You just lost this is what I'm calling unrecoverable cost. Means it's like a taxi. If you don't get the client, it's over. It's over. There is no way you can say, I will accumulate clients and do that uh, in the future. So this is what I want. So when I say, because everybody will say, oh, I will be impacted. But one thing I'm talking here, it's unrecoverable impact. Means you lost. You are a company that sell goods for Christmas and the coronavirus is striking out and stop everything just before Christmas. So you lost 30% of your sales. This is what I'm talking a recoverable damage because we cannot say, okay, let's do Christmas in February so people can recover that. So think about that. The other one, the long-term business, long-term, then I'm not talking next month, but I'm talking when coronavirus is over and it will, your business, can be directly and negatively, not positively, negatively impacted by the existence of COVID-19. And this is based on micro and macro economy. So let me give you an example. When SARS hit China, this was an extremely good thing for Alibaba because people did not went out to buy, so they start buying online. I'm, I'm just using, this was a positive impact, but maybe, for example, you are an event company, you are impacted now, but then people become so creative on doing virtual events, that virtual events become so nice and so good that your business became negatively impacted because maybe next year or the year after, there is no coronavirus, there is no COVID-19, but you don't have clients because people learn how to do events that do not need, for example, to get together physically. Please, I'm just helping you think through that, okay? So now I have the questions, the 10 questions around your project. 
So now I'm not talking about your company and I'm not talking about your country. I'm talking about the project you, in the other side of the screen, are running and leading now. So the first question, the work of this project is located in a category one or two area based on the UK government. So remember, one, I said organization. Now I'm saying your project. Look, it's different, right? Maybe your organization has not a strong operations in area one or two, but your project is in the heart of, for example, one affected area. The next question, the project or initiative has a large number of people working in the same location. So I try to identify what would be a magic number, but this is just my personal feeling. If you have more than 50 or 100 people working together, this may become a problem. But if you have an IT project and it's all virtual teams, people work from home, then it's much less dramatic. The project or initiative has a strong need for physical interaction among the team members to be physically together. So you have meetings, you have meetings every day, your people work together. So if this is the case, you are more in trouble. The work of your team, and this is a very important statement, is directly associated with public transport, like train, buses, ships, plane, subway, for example, too. So what I'm telling here is that a very important part of the work you do on that project, I'm not talking about your organization, requires people to move, to commute a lot. These are very impacted sectors because if the government needs to shut down, these will be areas that will be shut down easily. And you, we saw this on TV. So if you have this, this need for mobility and mostly on this public transport where a lot of people get together, you are more in danger, more exposed to the coronavirus. This one is very simple and straightforward. A member of the team got infected. If you have a member of the team infected, you need to put a red alarm. And not only because it can contaminate other people, but there is also the psychological effect. So this contaminates the mood and generates a massive wave of panic. So you need to understand that. The workforce is extremely specialized, limiting temporary replacement options. What this statement is about. Let's suppose that you have such an expert in your team on X, Y, Z, that if he or she gets sick by coronavirus, you just stop everything because you cannot replace that ability of work. So this is an extremely important point. So do you have a possibility of replacing temporarily people to keep the work of your project moving? A relevant part of the work must be done in loco. For example, it's a construction. You cannot say, oh, you go and do the tiling at home and then come back tomorrow because this does not work. Virtually, you can do a lot of things like this video, for example, you can watch from your home, but there are so many things that you cannot do without having people getting together. So these works where people get together are more challenging today than the virtual work. Initiative or project is heavily dependent on international supply chain. So let's suppose that your project relies massively on international supplies. So for example, uh, let's suppose that your project is a new device or a new tech device that requires pieces coming from 10 different parts of the world. So you are much more fragile today by a disruption in the supply chain. Because if something goes wrong, you just stop everything. So if you have projects of this nature, you are more fragile and more exposed. A relevant source of supplies for you is located in a category one or two. So let's suppose you have a supply that is so located in a category one or two that you just cannot receive the goods. And most of the time today, what we do when we are managing projects, we try to make purchases as late as we can because we want to delay cash flow. 
So now what we would love is to have all the supplies in loco so we can do the work. So many times you are not affected by COVID-19, but your supplier is and, and the supplier does not deliver to you. So you cannot do anything. 19, there is a high negative impact if the work of your project is reduced or stopped. It's not just loss of revenue. It means that if you stop your project, most of the time you miss that opportunity. So let's suppose you are a technology company that is releasing an app for Valentine's Day and you plan to sell this 3D heart. But then you may be affected by COVID and then you say, I need to stop this Valentine project for three months and then you miss the Valentine's. So your work becomes just irrelevant. You miss that opportunity, that window of opportunity. Let's suppose that you, for example, are a supplier of the Olympic Games. And then suddenly the Olympic Games is just delayed or it's even canceled. Automatically that work, you cannot just stop them because it will be dramatically affected by all the other effects. And then the last one. Disruption in supply chain will have a severe impact on the development of work. This is a very simple. If there is no ship, there is no plane, no new supplies in your project, can you move or not? So I, I know that many of you are from absolutely different sectors. So I'm sad to tell that some projects will be far more affected and not because the project manager is less competent or more competent or because you are using agile or whatever. This, this, uh, let me tell you, at this point, it doesn't matter. For example, if you are an IT company with a completely virtual team that does not have a supply, maybe the only effect you may have it may be a recession that could make the benefits of the product you are developing become lower, so people will have less interest. But others, let's suppose that you are a team park or you are a supplier or a catering company for a football stadium and suddenly the government of your country just put a policy that no football game will be allowed in the next 45 days. So what can you do? So based it on this, it's very easy for you to calculate your level of exposure. So I did it in a very simple way. So basically what you need, you need to count how many of the 20 you mark disagree, how many of the 20 you mark it neutral, how many of the 20 you mark it agree, and how many you put strongly agree. So what do you need? You need to just multiply these numbers, the counting, by the weight and add up all of them. Of course, the worst case scenario is if you put all the 20 with strongly agree. Then it will be 20 times 5. It will be 100, the maximum possible. And I need to tell you, if this is your case, then you don't need that. You already know the amount of trouble that you are in now in your project. But I'm, I'm not concerned about this group. But let's suppose you had 10 neutral and 10 agree. So 10 neutral times one, 10 times one, it's a 10. Then we go to the agree. Agree is three, 10 times three, 30. 30 plus 10, it's 40. You are exactly in the borderline between green and yellow. Because if you have a number that is below 40, it's a green. A second tier is between 41 and 60, then it's a yellow. And above 60 is a red. And then on the second page, I did uh, a set of suggestions for you if you face with the green or the yellow or the red. So if you are on a green, what I'm telling you is that you don't need to be concerned, you just need to be mindful and you need to evaluate this because maybe tomorrow with new information, 
things can change. You can start shaping this and maybe your number can go up. But if you are on a yellow, and, and probably many of you will be on this yellow, the first thing I suggest you to do is do not panic with the news. Be mindful. The worst thing that you need now is to panic. And, and let me tell you, people love this panic mode because there is a lot of winning. I had the chance to be very close to the Ebola crisis in 2015 and very close to many tragedies uh, during project work. People get so shocked about tragedy and they get so afraid that they get so contaminated that you take a risk that in actual, in reality is like that and you, it becomes the end of the world. So one thing I want to tell you from my heart, I'm not expert in coronavirus, but the world will not come to an end. Trust me. Okay, we may have different impacts, but the world is not over. We are very resilient. I, I can tell you, we are very resilient. So be mindful. So don't, don't be on this panic mode. Oh, you work in a 200,000 employee company and one got contaminated and say, oh, now it's over. No, don't do that. Don't be smart. Second, increase remote work and develop mechanisms to protect the team. First, the first thing is your duty of care. You need to protect your team. You, you cannot send someone that you think that there is a true real risk of them get contaminated. This is not leadership, okay? Third one, understand the exposure by doing this assessment and using other sources. So I'm putting some other sources for you but reliable sources. Please do not think that that video you received on WhatsApp. Fourth, reprogram tasks that may be impacted due to the lack of supplies. If there is a task that could be facing a lack of supply, can I shift and postpone it? Review your work plan immediately. Take everything that you can do remotely, put now. Everything that you need physical presence, just postpone or try to find new ways. If you work on an agile environment, thinking about your next release and say, okay, can I shift, for example, this release to a different release? Can I do another thing on my project and not this thing to avoid going through that path? This is exactly what we need to do now when I talk about reviewing the work plan. Create a temporary stabilization plan, including supply stocks and other measures to reduce your dependency on logistics. Did you see what happens in the supermarket when coronavirus approaches? Oh, all stocks go out. Why? Because people bring the stocks to their home. So in your project, you must do the same. You must say, okay, I am heavily dependent on paper, so let me anticipate. And instead of buying paper for the week, let me buy paper for the month so I can be more safe. This is exactly what we need to do in this crisis environment. He programmed tasks that are capital intensive if you have liquidity problems. Make an impact assessment. Check in one thing. Can I freeze or stop this project? Can I stop? Can I put a halt on this project for a couple of weeks and resume the project? Or it's just impossible. If I do that, I lose everything. Nine, improve and reinforce internal and external communications. And why you do that? Because you want to avoid creating a fertile environment for fake news. Let me tell you, crisis is such a rich soil for fake news. So if you do not communicate properly on what is going on, people will say, things that you will not believe. So you, as a project leader, as a scrum master, or whatever, you must communicate clearly on what are the challenges, what are the steps, because then this gossip environment will not come up. Last, on the yellow, create a proactive and positive mindset. Because people at this time, when they start facing challenges, they become very negative. Proactivity is part of your leadership role. So you need to say, look, it's a challenge, but we will win. We are able, we have competence, we have brains to do that. When it's a red, but when it's a red means above 60, means you are strongly agreeing with a lot of this 
thinks on this statement. Now speed is everything. Now speed is everything. You need to decide and act fast. Second, if you have not done yet, you need to put a risk response team immediately. When I say immediately, it's not next week. It, it's now, it's now. And stop the video, go there and do that. Number three, send employees to work home effectively immediately. Because remember what I said in the yellow, your first task is to protect the team. Fourth one, create a streamlined communication plan with the team with strong support to those who were affected or infected by COVID-19. And you, you may say, okay, what I will do if someone in my team get contaminated? I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when people get contaminated and this kind of, of crisis, it's also a fertile field for racism, for discrimination. You as a project manager, you are responsible for giving the psychological support to the people that are working with you. This is what's expected from your job. Number five, revisit your cash flow and understand the potential impact. Let's suppose that you need to receive cash flow from clients to do the work of your project. You are a construction company that is receiving funding. Is there an immediate impact? Some companies will have more than others. Some projects will have more than others, but you need to be aware of that. Number six, turn all project and product development meetings into virtual meetings. You may say, oh, it's not effective. Trust me, if you are in a critical situation, you don't care. It's better than not to have. Use technology. There are wonderful technology platforms to help you to do that. Seven, create an immediate communication channel with all relevant suppliers to evaluate the impact on supply chain. Because maybe you are on yellow, but your main supplier is in red. So think about that. Eight, communicate immediately with relevant clients and partners the actions you're putting in place. Saying, look, I'm building this for you. I'm doing this software, I'm software house. I'm doing this software house, but I'm based in a region that was affected. So client, you are in the other side of the planet, but you need to understand that. Do not miss the opportunity to be clear and build trust. Because in crisis moments, one of the things that you lose faster is trust. Review and postpone tasks that require human interaction. Review and postpone tasks that require public travel. Review and postpone tasks that are cash intensive. Cash intensive tasks are risky and are risky in an unstable environment. So try to review. Remember, you are on an emergency. It's not the time, sorry, for you to decide on doing a cosmetic thing. It's not the time now. It's time now to protect and keep the core safe. Twelve, delay the signature of new contracts until there is a clear understanding of the impact of COVID-19 in the works and in the product. So make sure that your contracts, they have clauses that protect you, your supplier, your client, when something like COVID-19 comes in place. I didn't want here uh, uh, to, to, to create a mathematical process, okay? Uh, life, coronavirus is far more complex. I'm just helping you with some guided discussions to avoid that the chaos and this panic dominate the environment. It, it's not something like, oh, it's 59 or six. It's just irrelevant. So if you don't want to use the numbers, but these are 20 things that I truly believe from my heart that you should pay attention. If your project goes bad, it's a destruction of value for your company and for the society. So we need to be able to cope with this kind of environment because this is not the first and it will not be the last. So again, all this video and this is all absolutely creative comments. So you, you can just take this. If you don't like, you just scrap it. But uh, I think it was my duty of care uh, to help you using a little bit of my experience. And I'm very positive that uh, we are facing challenges and, and challenges will 
always be there, but we are always very mindful and strong to keep life moving. So all the best. I'm sure coronavirus will be over soon and we'll be turning into back into our projects with a very positive mindset. Take care.